Uh, Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. So, so glad for what the Lord's been doing this week and, and last weekend and this weekend. Amen. Verse number one, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. He said unto me, again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Right. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Yeah. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds of O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet an exceeding great army. Yeah. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Amen. My goodness, I know I've read a lot here tonight. Amen. Will you help me pray before we're seated? God, we sure do need your help tonight, Lord. I need the anointing to help me, God. Flow through me, God. Lord, we're asking you, God, right now to bless each and every person, God. Let the anointing flow to them, God. Let them see and understand the message tonight. The word of the Lord coming to their heart and ears. God, we praise you for it right now, God. We thank you for strength. We thank you for help, God. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name, hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. I praise you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, very familiar set of scripture here tonight. This is the one that all of Pentecost loves to hear preached. Amen. Because it is a wonderful story. Amen. Of uh, bringing back to life something that is dead. Amen. Restoring, amen, the flesh upon the skin of bones long since dried up. Amen. I want to bring your attention to a few things here tonight. Yes. One is, is that God took this man up in the spirit. He wasn't carnal. He wasn't down at the uh, local, uh, you know, he, 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 he wasn't, he wasn't down there playing cards. He wasn't at the restaurant. He wasn't hanging out with the boys. Come on, come on. Man, but he was doing what it took to get in the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord took him up. Amen. And brought him over into a valley where there was a great many people that had died there. Amen. The and the Spirit of the Lord took him around about, all around. He surveyed it. Amen. 
And he finally he said, Son of man, can these bones live? Uh, hallelujah. It's a question that God asks you tonight. Uh, come on, can you live again? Can you come up out of your situation? Can you be helped tonight? Can you be restored? Can you be blessed? Can you be healed? Uh, come on. Well, praise God. And the questions can keep coming on and on and on. Uh, Praise God. And God is asking again here. Amen. But then he said, the man said, Oh, Lord, thou knowest. Praise God. Again, he said unto me, the man of God said, Prophesy unto these bones. The Lord said this to the man of God. Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling you here tonight, again, God can do anything at any time, at any place, right. no matter the circumstance. Right. Because our God is an almighty God. Our God is a powerful God. Our God is a creator. Hallelujah. He's absolute. He's absolutely powerful. Amen. So God can do whatever he wants in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. But he asked the question, son of man, can they live? Oh, you know. And so the word of the Lord came to the man of God again, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, hear ye the word of the Lord. You're not going to get anywhere with God without the wonderful word of the Lord. Somebody's got to tell you what thus saith the Lord. I'm telling you that valley of dry bones would have stayed a valley of dry bones if there hadn't been a prophet there to prophesy. Amen. Listen to me tonight. You cannot just go through life living for God on your own. You can't just have church anywhere you want to. I know you can have church in the car. I know you can have church at the grocery store if you wanted to. I understand you can get in the spirit of God just about anywhere in this world. But I'm telling you here tonight... God only operates and he only works through the word of God, which is preached by a man of God. Amen. Amen. Help me, church, tonight. Right. We've got to establish some things. Yeah. If I'm going to get anywhere with God, I've got to have a man of God in my life. Amen. There might be some dead things in my life. There might be some dried up bones in my life. There might be needing something with, they might need a breath in it. Amen. There's got to be somebody that will preach to me. Prophesy to me. Yes. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You cannot make it without a man of God. Right. You can read the Bible through and through, over and over again. Right. You can study every topic there is to study when it comes to the Scripture. You can learn all about love, and you can learn all about the gifts of the Spirit, and you can learn about the doctrines over and over and over. The Bible will show you how to dress. It'll show you how to talk. It'll show you where to walk. It'll show you who to hang out with and who to avoid. It'll show you what to eat and what not to eat. It'll show you what you can drink and what you should not drink. And on and on and on and on. You can study it until you know it through and through and through. But you still can't go to heaven without a preacher in your life saying, Thus saith the Lord. Well, help me, somebody. You've got to have a man of God. There's going to be a valley that you walk through. There's going to be a time when you're dried up. There's going to be a time when you have no breath in you. Well, praise God. Jesus. What are you going to do when you find yourself piling up with others All right. that are also dry? Mm. Gone away. 
Amen. Are you listening to me today? Yes. Woo. I want all the children listening to me today. Amen. Focus your mind on what I'm saying tonight. Listen to me good. Amen. Well, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do tic-tac-toe later. Right. We can become an artist later. Amen. We can, well, praise the Lord. Sister wow. Wendy, we can work on our stories later. Yeah. Amen. She, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. I don't yeah. know what you have to write, but write it later. Amen. The preacher's preaching right now. Woo! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you're writing scriptures down, taking notes, that's wonderful. Keep on. Right. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. You got to have a man of God in your life. Right. God. Did you know God loves you? Yeah. Just one guy. I can't go around God. You can't go around God. No. God made wet water wet. You just can't change it. Right. Right. Amen. He, he made the grass green. You you can't change it. Right. Oh, you can let men have come up with ways to try to change a whole lot of things. But it ain't working. Right. It never works when when man gets done with it. Man, as right now, trying to figure out a way to make it work where a, a, a woman can be changed into a man. And a man can be changed into a woman without there being problems and complications. But it ain't happened yet and it ain't going to happen. Well, praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, you know what? Because man doesn't have the ability to change one's DNA. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, praise God. God made Adam and then he made Eve. Amen. Two totally different individuals. Right. The only thing that they're categorized together in is that they're both human. Right. But they are two distinct, different. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I'm getting on this today. Preach, Preach. I'm gonna get on it because I don't want it. I don't want that controversy being in this church. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got X chromosomes and you got Y chromosomes. Right. So, come on, and well, praise God. Oh. And I'm not I'm not sure exactly how they're matched up together, but but somehow or another you got X and Y, you got X and X, and right. you right. yeah. You can't you can't change a man into a woman no. because you can't rewrite their DNA. No. You can mess up their DNA. No. But you can't rewrite it. No. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me get back to it. We can't get around God. No. God established the church. Amen. The church didn't establish itself. That's right. And the men of old, the men of God, the prophets and the disciples and the apostles. Amen. You read about it every day in the Bible. They actually laid down the, the groundwork uh -huh. for the governing bodies of the churches. Right. And Paul said, you don't do this and you don't do that. Right. And you must do this and you must do that. Right. And if there's yeah. going to be any order or cohesion around, we got to get along and this is how we do it. Right. Right. Amen. The Spirit itself... Come on, you've got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. If a church ain't led by the Spirit of the Lord, yeah. it's a church full of chaos Come on. and Come problems. On. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is why it's important for saints to get on their knees and not only pray for their needs and their desires, but pray for their men of God. Yeah. Because the Word of God 
comes from the Lord through the man of God. And that man of God needs to be connected. He needs to be powerful in the spirit. Hallelujah. You can't afford it for me to miss God. You don't want that. I don't want that. We can't afford to miss God. Come on, we can't afford to be carnal. I don't want you to be carnal, but you know good and well that I don't need to be carnal. Come on, we got to be a spirit led. We got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Anybody listening to me today, you can't make it without a man of God. That's right. Somebody said, well, what are you saying, Brother Smith? We got to come to you and ask you every little thing. Mm -mm. I don't care what you eat when you eat it. I don't care what you drink or when you drink it. As long as it ain't a sin. Right. Amen. Amen. Can I just... Can I borrow somebody's kid today? Yeah. Brother Joey, you're grown. I can't say nothing about it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Now, listen. I, I'm not poking at anybody here today. Brother Joey, how old are you? 21? 22. Well, you're going to be 21 until I remember that you're not 21 no more. Amen. Yeah. He's 22. He'll be 31. Now. How old are you? 21? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Now listen, if I see him come into this church with his sleeve rolled halfway up, and just out of the bottom of that sleeve I start seeing some green ink, what do we call that? Yeah, tattoo. <laughs> now listen, I, there's people everywhere now they has got tattoos. Right. They got crosses, they got fish, they got scriptures, they got mama. Right. right. Amen. Amen. Now listen, I'm I'm sure there's going to be hundreds of people come through here in this church that have tattoos. Right. right. But you know what? It's my job as a man of God to take and say to this young man right here who's who doesn't hadn't got started down that path <coughs> to say, hey, you know what Deuteronomy says? That's a book in the Old Testament. It says not to put any ink upon your body. Amen. 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 Now, all these others that came through here that got tattoos, they obviously didn't know that's what the Scripture said. Right. And we can't hold it against them, and we're sure not going to try to burn it off of them. Right. Oh, right. ah, hallelujah. Come on, but you know what? They might have also drank a beer and done some meth and cocaine and all right. kind of things. Right. But you know what? When they start living for God, on, some preacher's got to get a hold of them and say, Hey, yeah. now listen, brother. We can't do no drinking anymore. Right. We don't need that meth anymore. Right. I don't care what you've done. Come on. Hey, I know you got tattoos on your body, but let's not put any more on That's right. This is what the Scripture says. Not to put any ink upon your body. You got to have a man of God to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Body. You know what? Body. God will wake a man up in the middle of the night. Uh -huh. Hey. Here's the scripture. In the Old Testament. And it's in the New Testament as well. Yeah. You might put a scripture on your heart. Now God, why did you give me that scripture? Because he's fixing a deal with something. All right. Amen. Come on, he's fixing this deal. He's wanting to help somebody with something. Uh -huh. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody might be interested in all that artwork on their body. You know what? <laughs> They might be interested in it. But let me tell you what the scripture says. 
Come on, if you want to follow God, God is willing to help you. And God is willing to give you a clean slate and a brand new start in life. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to go on in God, you got to head that direction and not get entangled again with the former things. I don't care if it's a cross or a scripture you're wanting to print. Amen. God himself said, do not put any mark upon your body and he actually used the word ink I'm telling you right now in the modern world we know that as a tattoo I'm telling you tonight not to preach on standards and all the do's and the don'ts but I'm giving you examples that somebody's going to need to hear that and it's going to come by the way of a man of God Good preaching. When a man of God sees things. You know what? I get frustrated at people that say, oh, preacher, you, you just preaching that because that's what you saw. Or you just preach that because you heard something. Well, let me, I can give you scripture in the Bible where Paul said, it's been named among you. That's right. Somebody got in his ear. Well, y'all ain't giving. I, we ain't give. We're not giving Paul the same treatment. Oh, brother Smith, it's got to come from God. Can't nobody tell you because then it won't be from God. Come on. Then you figure out how Paul did it and got away with it. Yeah. Somebody told him what was That's going good. on in the Corinthian good church. Teaching. Good teaching. Yeah, I'll take you the scripture and show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so when I come in here and, and I see something going on, oh, you know we can't do that. Come on, don't don't say those kind of things. Don't 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 tell those kind of jokes. Don't laugh at those kind of jokes. Don't get entangled up with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm 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 gonna move on here tonight, but you gotta you got to have a man of God. Yes. You gotta have a man of God. Amen. What do I do? What do I say? How do I just come? Come on. If if it, if you got something to bring, if you don't know what to bring to me or what not to bring to me, just bring it, and I'll tell you. Hey, you know what? I don't have to worry about that. I'll yeah. keep it right. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if you're doing too much. Right. I'll let you know if you're involving me in too many of your decisions. Come on. I don't care if you're right with red ink or blue ink or black ink. It don't matter. You don't have to ask that. Oh, Brother Smith, that's silly. But you'll be surprised how many silly things come through the office in the counseling. Oh, uh, Sister Harrington, give me an amen. You, <laughs> she's been there before. She knows. I, I, I tell you, you come across some, some things that are just... Uh, and, and some of it is, brother, some of it is that people want an attention. A lot of it is. Oh, but if we just dip into this message a little deeper here tonight. Yes. Them bones didn't do a single thing until the prophecy came. When God said, you speak to these bones and you yes. tell them, hear ye what thus saith the word of the Lord. And then not when he got them all gathered up and bone came to their bone. And now they're just laying there dead bodies, basically just skeletons. Amen. He said, now prophesy again. And the, and the skin and all the tissue came home. And now they're, they're just laying there lifeless bodies. And he said, prophesy again. Prophesy to the wind this time. And, I, and I'm telling you what, we read it earlier, the breath of life came into them. Yeah. Each and every time it was by commandment of the Lord to prophesy. Yeah. Amen. I'm using this scripture here tonight to let you know we got to be preached to. Amen. Amen. How are you going to know what's holy and what ain't? Amen. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, get full of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will make you feel, ooh, I better not do that. That's right. Ooh, I better not go there. That's right. That's right. This is making me uncomfortable. Maybe yeah. it's the Lord telling me. 
yeah. that I shouldn't do that or this. Right. Amen. Did you know the Holy Ghost will help you know what sin is right. and what ain't? Yes, it will. Right. You see, the world, let me get back to the to the gender thing real quick. The world right now thinks it's absolutely okay to change things and be whatever you want, be married to whoever you want. Yeah. It's not a sin to them, but let one of them get the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then they'll feel just wrong about doing it. Right. There's some things that nature itself will teach you. Praise God. That's right. Praise God. Yes. But all the while, God instituted the, the, the precept, the concept of Him speaking to a man of God. Right. And you got to have a man of God. Another point that I want to bring out in this message is not just the prophecies, not just the preaching. Amen. But the prophecy comes... But for what reason? Not because God needed an army. Not because God wanted to show a man that there was miraculous power. But what was the reason? That the children of Israel may know that I am the Lord. And that I have spoken. <coughs> Hallelujah. Somebody needs to get it in their heart. Preach to me, preacher. Right. Let me hear what thus saith yeah, the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I got to know that the voice of the Lord is dealing with me. Don't you understand when the preacher's preaching to you and God is putting conviction in the house, that is something to be thankful for. Oh, I would hate to know that a preacher didn't want to talk to me anymore. <clears throat> that he didn't want to address my situations anymore. That he didn't want to deal with me anymore. Right, yeah. right. Oh, I'm thankful that God sends messages that put conviction on me. Yeah. Come on, church, you got to appreciate the convicting power of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. You know what? People really start praying when it really gets heavy. Right. And you feel that, ooh, I don't know what's about to happen if people go to pray. Amen. We don't pray for our babies like we do when they're sick. Amen. Amen. We don't get concerned about the healing power of Jesus until we really need it. Come on. You know why? Because that pressure's on us. That burden is on us. That need is great. Hallelujah. I want to know that when God speaks, Amen. When, when God uses the preaching to get to me, I'm going to know that it is the power of God. When the man of God does speak, and you know you hadn't said it to nobody, nobody, there ain't no possible way he could know it, you then realize what, you, what God said, that the children of Israel may know that I am the Lord yes. and that I have spoken it. Hallelujah. And there's no preacher that I know of that's really a preacher called of God. Oh, there's lots of them out there. But not a true child of God called man of God that likes to rub people the wrong way. Right. Amen. You think David didn't tell his son no because he hated him? That he wanted him to wind up being hung from a tree by his hair? Now the scripture tells us, Amen, that 
Proverbs and Psalms, absolutely. If you don't correct your child, you don't love them. That's that's Bible. That's Bible. Right. Right. Amen. But we understand and we know that there is some, uh, there is a aspect of love. Well, nobody wants to see their child hurt or damaged in some way. But that ability to say no causes awkwardness. It causes feelings, right? Yeah. This is what keeps us from. I, 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 I know I shouldn't give you that sucker because the dentist is saying that I'll be coming to see him. <laughs> uh, but I can't tell him no right now. He's so cute and cuddly. Then it said, don't give them all that juice. Oh, but juice is so good and it, and it quietens them down. Satisfies them. Yep. Now you're going to have problems. Amen. Amen. It's the same principle. All right. It's the same thing. Hallelujah. You know how many doctors have told me if I don't lay off the bread, lay off the sugar, I'm going to be a diabetic. That's anybody. You're going to have problems. Drugs, alcohol, meth, that's not the number one killer in the world. No. Nearly every disease there is is contributed to the consumption of sugar. Right. Well, you can take it or leave it. Right. Amen. And you know when that disease gets started? Somewhere when Sally's this tall. And that body can handle it, that body can handle it, that body can handle it until now we're in our 40s and 50s and it's just getting to where it can't handle it no more. Amen. Huh? And the whole lifetime somebody's saying, don't do that. <laughs> better stay away from that. You better get off of that. Come on, you better, All right, right? Somebody's preaching to you. Ever had somebody preach to you about you? Well, hallelujah. It's the same principle. Yeah. Come on, we gotta have our we gotta make sure our soul is right with God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm visiting with somebody the other day. Hey, pray for me. Doctor says my liver is shot. What in the world? What's wrong with your liver? Well, it's all those years of drinking and smoking. You, you you didn't know this was going to happen to you? Yeah, but you know, just life got away. And now, now it's come back to... Come on. Same thing, spiritually speaking. Come on, you need a man of God to say, Hey, don't do certain things. Right. Don't do this. Don't right. do that. Amen. But not only does he have to preach it to you, but there's got to be some subjection to the Word of God. Amen. Come on, my man of God don't want me dressing like that. My man of God, come on, has preached the word of God that I shouldn't uh, be looking at that or reading that or, or enjoying or enjoying myself to this or that. It, it's not because I'm trying to control every little thing about you. I'm not trying to tell you where you can and can't go, but there are some places you shouldn't uh, go. Amen. Right. That if you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to walk with God, you just can't go. Amen. I refuse to drink a root beer sitting on a bar stool at the local bar. Amen. Amen. I praise God. Well, hallelujah. Come on. It's just not a place to be. That's right. Amen. And so a preacher's going to preach. Stay out of the bars. That's right. Amen. And so a preacher's going to preach. Ma'am, girl, daughter, if you wear that, come on, it's going to cause you problems. Right. Hallelujah. You need a man of God that will warn you of the problems to come out of said actions if you go through with it. Come on. 
Come on, this is why I'm saying, hey, I might not be your daddy. I might not be your boss. I may not own you or be a part of your household. But I'm telling you here today, when God drops it in my spirit, hey, that girl don't need to date that guy. Or that guy don't need to talk to that girl. It's because there is a situation that nobody's aware of at the time except for God. And he drops it in the spirit of the man of God and gives him a warning. Praise the Lord. Somebody that's carnal will think, well, they're just trying to be in my business. I guess then the only time you want someone to be in your business is when you need them at the hospital. Or you need them at the local jail. Or you need them at the courtroom. Amen. Or you need them at the utility place to help you with the bill. The gas station. That's the only time you need them. Come on, I'm preaching to you tonight. We've got to have yeah. a man of God in our life. Right. Come on, there are dry bones that God wants to raise up. Yes. Come on, there are there are skeletons, amen, that have been dead so long. And God wants to breathe new life into them. Put the skin back on them, amen. There is a standing army waiting. If somebody will hear what thus saith the Lord. If a man of God will prophesy. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. It's those people that have heard the man of God say, you shouldn't be seeing that on YouTube. And yet they go and continue to see that on YouTube. That years later they have problems now because they saw that on YouTube. Right. I had a young man come to me and say, oh, not, not anybody here. I don't want to start looking around for who it is. Man, I, if I'd have never saw that first picture of that magazine, <laughs> that's the one that haunts me. If I'd have just never seen it. Yeah. And here you was, 10, 11, 12 years old, on the pew, not worried about any of that. And the man of God is preaching to the other young people, the other young men, don't do it. Don't do it. You heard it. But you forgot to take heed to it. Amen. Come on. Come on. If their bones are going to rise up, it's because they've got to hear the word of the Lord. Right. And they're not going to hear it if the prophecy don't come forth. Amen. And the prophecy is not going to come forth if it ain't been mandated by the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, I wish everybody was here tonight to hear this preacher tonight. You've got to have a man of God in your life and you've got to accept direction. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know we all pray. I know we all have the Holy Ghost. I know we're all living for God. But you got to have a man of God. Amen. Amen. And sometimes those messages are going to be oh so sweet and powerful and just what I need and a pick-me-upper. Oh, it's so refreshing. But sometimes those messages are, hey, I see danger coming down the path. I, I think you need to veer right. Looks like you're leaning left, but I think you need to go to the right path. There's going to be messages. Amen. Does everybody understand there are going to be messages that none of us are comfortable with? Right. Anybody, anybody ever got upset at someone because they said, you need to go pray? That's the last thing a lot of people want to hear. Right. You need to go pray. Mom. It don't feel good, but you know what? It might be just, just right. Yeah. Hallelujah. I've literally asked people in the office that have come to me, have you prayed about this? No, I was just going to see what you thought. Well, you, you, we need to pray about it. I'm telling you, if you'll just pray about it, come on, God will put it in your heart, what to do. Amen. And then He's going to confirm it. 
by the word. That's right. God will always confirm his direction by this book. Yes. Amen. Anything God wants you to do, he will confirm it through his word. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel what I'm saying here tonight. Amen. I tell you what, Lord, the Lord is able to give strength. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. Come on, I've said it over and over. I've said it so much that it's lost its luster. Wow. Amen. But it's true. And God has a plan. And that plan starts. Amen. After you come up out of that altar, get in the Holy Ghost and baptize in Jesus' name. And now it's time to start hearing the word. What does God want? What does God desire? It's time to get you a Bible and start reading it. Yes. Saying, God, show me. show me. Come on, some of you you that have Bibles, it's time to get them down off the shelf and start reading it. Right. I want you to go home and read this very chapter. Say, God, I want to make sure I got it. Yeah. I want to make sure I got it all tonight. All right. Amen. Not, not just the prophecy, not just the moving of the Spirit, but I, I want to make sure that I know that you're God. And that God is in what I'm doing. Amen. How would you feel if you went all the way on your journey thinking, Paul, that you were in the will of God and you got to Damascus nearly and God had to set you down off that horse mm -hmm. and you found out all this time you were actually fighting against the very God you thought you were serving. What a sick feeling right. how would you feel tonight church if you thought you were in the will of God and then all of a sudden God got a hold of you and you realized hey these decisions I've been making or are about to make they're not they're not in the will of God yeah. amen so this is one of those messages that is, is hard to preach because I'm your man of God. Right. It's hard for... Yeah. And the kids come up to me, my kids, well, why do we got to do that? Well, first of all, because I said so. That, that's a hard... Anybody, any parent ever said that? Yeah. Right. Because I told you to do that. That's why. And then later on, you do, you do need to explain to them if they truly don't know, most of the time they probably already know. <laughs> Amen. Why do I have to clean up my room? Well, because I said so. But here's the reason why. Amen. You don't want to be outside of the will of God. Amen. Amen. And in order for you to be in the will of God, there has to be a man of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Let's stand here tonight. Praise God. Praise God. It's not all about me, 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 me. I'm not trying to lift myself up. Amen. Remember the other night when I said, if you have a need... And you don't come forth for prayer, it's on you. Yeah. The reason for that being, I'm not God. I, I can't see. I can't read your mind. Right. When the Bible says, "Is any sick among you? Let him pray." And then what? Let him call for the elders. If you don't come forth, you're missing out. Amen. Even if the song ain't fast and loud. Right. Amen. So I said it the other night. If you don't come forth, amen, you're, it's on you. Amen. Well, I need a man of God that just can follow, that be sensitive to the Spirit. Oh, he is, but he's not sensitive to your every need. Amen. I want to be sensitive to the Spirit. Amen. 
But at the certain times, there may be a spiritual need greater than yours. Right. Amen. Well, hallelujah. We've got to have a man of God. Let's pray. Would y'all pray for me? That I'll be God, God. full of faith and power in the anointing. Yes. Amen. Because I've got to lead you. I don't want to lead you wrong. Right. I sure don't want you to be in trouble with God because I preached something that wasn't right or refused to preach something that I knew I needed to. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Uh, somebody needs to pray, God. Give him strength, Lord, that he can preach what he needs to preach. God, put it in his countenance. Amen. Lord, in his, in his, hallelujah. God, we don't want him to be worried about our feelings. Come on, God, we don't want him to be worried about our feelings because he might miss it. And then we'll both be lost in hell undone without you. The word. God, I don't want him to be pressured by my God, God, attitude or my spatial expressions. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to pray for your man of God Praise that he'll do right. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, folks. God may need me to preach on baptism, but I might have it in my mind to preach about the oneness of God. I'm telling you what, we got to have it in our mind to follow the Spirit of the Lord. I don't want you to think it odd or strange if Brother Smith's up here saying, hey, let's reach for the Lord. Come on, let's reach out for the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, he don't have a message. He's trying to search. You better believe I'm trying to search because I've got all kind of messages in me. I have literally preached hundreds of thousands of messages. I got, I got a whole list of them. I can preach any one of them. Amen. But I want you to understand that as a church, we need to be searching and we need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Amen. We need to be sensitive to what God wants. Hallelujah. God may not want a message for that night. He may want a healing service. Come on, there may be a service where God wants to deliver people from devils. Uh, amen. And we got to be sensitive to it. Uh, and your man of God's got to know, uh, come on, the vein of the Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Not every service is going to be about songs and preaching. Uh, amen. But I'm telling you, we've got to understand that God has a perfect will for every service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, God, we need you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, God. Does anybody know the names of the two men that, set, that stood beside Moses, held up his arms? Huh? Y'all remember them? And as long as his hands were held up, the battle was in their favor. Yeah. But as he got tired and had to rest the, the battle, they began to lose the war. Right. And then, no, 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 we're not going to let, hey, he gets tired, we're going to hold him up for him. Right, you know what that did? That took the pressure off of the man of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey. It's all right for you to take the pressure. I'm telling you, this is hard to preach tonight. Because I'm dealing with myself and my relation to you. But it's got to be preached. It's all right for you to take the burden. Come on. It's all right for you to do the praying. Oh, come on. It's all right for you to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You need a man of God, but you need his hands raised. Come on, there's victory when his hands are lifted up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to be the first one to tell you, I'm not the greatest preacher. I'm not the deepest when it comes to the scripture. I'm not scholarly at all. Amen. Verbal Bean said, and I'm definitely not trying to be Verbal Bean, 
But he said very, Sister Harrington, he said very rarely did I come to the pulpit with a message because I was so worried about what God wanted to do that I wanted to find out. And many a times, some of the greatest messages I preached, he said, was when God dropped a scripture in my mind right there at the pulpit and I just began to preach. Praise the Lord. Right. He said, now that's not a, that's not a, a, a means for me to go home and be lazy about studying. Right. I'm fasting. Amen. But I'm telling you what, I think Pentecost has become so cut and dry. Yeah. All right. Three services, an offering, a testimony service, 45 minutes of preaching, and three minutes of praying at the altar. All right. That's good. Brother. Let's go home before it gets out. That's good. Oh. I'm not rebuking anybody's mindset. I'm just telling you right now that we've got to let God do yeah. some work. Do it, Lord. We have come to the place in society, and I promise you I'm about to let you go. Amen. That is now awkward for a man of God to say, Hey, you, come up here. I want to pray for you. Right. All right. That's awkward. That's putting me on the spot. Yeah, but you got to understand, God's wanting to heal you of your disease. Come on up. <laughs> it ain't always a rebuke when you got to come up. Hallelujah. All right. Well, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about 2024 where our hands are so... We're worried about getting on somebody's nerves. How many of y'all wanting a man of God that is not afraid to operate? Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well... I could just go on and on and on. We're not going to do that. Will you help me pray one more time that God will begin to reveal to you, amen, through prayer and through fasting, the direction, amen, that He wants to go with this church. Amen. Come on. God, you show me the heart of the man of God. God, I want to get with Him and His desire. Amen. I know He's trying to follow you, God. But God, I want to be on the same page with my man of God. Come on, I want to be right there on cue with the man of God. Hallelujah. Come on, church, you got to understand, I'm not trying to build a cult here. I'm not trying to be cultish here tonight. But I am trying to tell you that God instituted the church and He put it in a certain order. Amen. In a certain direction. Hallelujah. I want to be. Moses said, come on, y'all decide today. I'm drawing a line in this sand. If you want to be with Korah, you go over there. If you want to be with me, you stand over here. God put that in motion. God said to do that. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise God. And now that you've prayed, God, help me to be behind the man of God. Yeah. When you go home tonight, you pray, God, be sure that you're leading him. God, I want to make sure that I pray tonight that you, you lead him. Yes. God, you be sure and talk to him about me, God. <laughs> God, you be sure and tell him. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Well, this is what I've delivered to you from my heart. God put it in my spirit the other night in prayer. Amen. Walking up and down the pipe fence at my house. Praying. I prayed for you. I prayed for this church. I prayed for your healings. Amen. Amen. And this is what God put on my heart. You've got that. I, I wish I wish this is Cynthia could be here tonight to pre hear this. Amen. Everybody in here, you must leave here understanding you've got to have me in your life. Amen. 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 Oh, I wish Sister Diane could be here tonight. She yes. needs a man of God in her life. Yeah. But she's got to understand it's necessary. Amen. Right. 
Right. Praise God. Uh, I'm just being personal here tonight. Maybe that's not etiquette. I don't know. But I'm telling you tonight, if the Puerto Rican family had just had a man of God in their life, one, one man of God, not five or six, they'd be here full of the Holy Ghost. They'd have a house. They'd have jobs. They'd have, well, praise God. All right. Amen. God wants your life be, to be put together and successful. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm trying to close. Amen. I know this. I know this. This is what God is telling me. God wants you to be prosperous. Amen. Amen. I would to God that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Amen. Amen. God wants certain things for you. Amen. Praise God. All right. What is today? Sunday night? Amen. We're going to have a prayer meeting here tomorrow night. And the prayer, prayer meetings have been good. Amen. And I want to keep it up. Let's keep praying like we know how to pray. And if you're not praying like you know how to pray, please start. It's going to continue this revival. Yes. Amen. 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 How many expected the people that came this morning to be here? Yeah. Well, Ain't nobody knew it, did they? I'm telling you, there's a man two blocks over wants to be here. Well, hallelujah. Let's get in the spirit. Let's get the Holy Ghost leading us. Amen. All right. Prayer meeting tomorrow. That's 7 o'clock. Amen. Is there any announcements I need to make that I'm not making? I told Sister Wendy, and I even told my wife, I said, you're going to have to make me. Y'all got to help me. I forget to let the kids sing their songs on Sunday morning. So we're going to get that fixed. They're going to help me. They're going to help me quit making all these mistakes. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I asked Brother Levi if he's ready to help me preach this morning. I tell him if he's ready, I give him a microphone. Right. He said, "What?" <laughs> you, Amen. Hallelujah. Alec will help me. Where's he at? Is he, I'm not preaching. He has a lot to say. Is he laying? Is he laying before the Lord? There he is over there. Amen. You ain't getting them girls in trouble, are you? Amen. He don't even know I'm talking to him. God bless you. Amen. We'll let you be dismissed. In Jesus' name, come back tomorrow expecting wonderful things in prayer meeting. Let's, oh, let's remember to pray for my wife. It's, oh, you need prayer. He needs prayer. Amen. He needs prayer right now. Where's the old? Y'all come help me pray. Mighty God. While we're praying for him, let's pray for my wife. Mighty God. And my daughter. And this sickness stuff's yeah, got to go. It's yeah, got to leave our house. Amen. I don't want to go into your house, but it's got to leave my house. Amen. Praise God. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to touch his body right now. I rebuke this sickness, God. God, I command it to go right now. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch him, God, by the authority of your word. God, you are a healer, God, and we put it in your hands right now to do this work before our very eyes. God, break this thing up. I rebuke it in your name, Jesus. You are all powerful, God, and we praise you for it. We love you for it, God. We magnify you, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray for Cynthia. She had to fly to uh, Missouri tonight for a, a specific need. Amen. A situation in her life. Don't want to get into the details. She hasn't made it known and open and all of these things. Hey, you know, when people come in, they've got things in their life that they got to yeah. deal with. Yeah. And we're going to pray with them and we're going to help them. That's Amen. right. Amen. And I want you to pray for her in this situation, but I also want you to pray 
that the Lord will bless her with a good job. She's needing a good job. Also, Sister Anna is needing prayer in that area. Amen. And we're going to believe. Yeah. We're going to pray. Amen. And uh, so, and then I, I want us to be in prayer for uh, Sister Robbie and Mira and Ethan. Yes. That amen. God will continue to work yes. things out for them and for her. We want you to be blessed. I mean, blessed and bubbling over with yeah. blessings. I wanted to be so blessed that people are jealous. God, give me some of those blessings. All right. Yeah. And then I'll preach against jealousy. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.